Hello everyone, this is Anjali. So today we are going to look at the differential diagnosis of C6, C7 radiculopathy and carpal tunnel syndrome. So most of the time these two conditions can be misdiagnosed because these two conditions almost show the same kind of a pain distribution pattern. To make a differential diagnosis, we should be able to understand the symptoms of carpal tunnel and the symptoms of C6, C7 radiculopathy. The carpal tunnel syndrome is a compression of a median nerve at the carpal tunnel around the wrist region. The carpal tunnel made by a fibrous tissue and the carpal bones. Nine flexor tendons and the median nerve passes through this tunnel at the wrist to reach the hand. Inflammation of the tendon or arthritis of the carpal bones can compress the median nerve through this tunnel. This is what we call a carpal tunnel syndrome. Symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. So the pain distribution will be on the first three fingers. And along with the pain, you can have a tingling sensation, sometimes numbness, sometimes a burning type of a pain. Over a period of time, your grip strength starts to reduce. Especially with the thumb, you find it hard to hold things. Cervical radiculopathy. So cervical radiculopathy is a compression of a cervical nerve. The cervical nerves originate from the neck spine and they are exiting through the vertebral foramen. Through that, a bulk disc or osteoarthritis changes in the spine, the vertebrae, can compress the cervical nerve. Symptoms of cervical radiculopathy. Cervical radiculopathy leads to a radiating arm pain, tingling sensation and numbness on the fingers, and weakness of the arm muscle. The problem is, if there is a compression at the level of C6 and C7, that also can give pain along the first three fingers. So C6 supplies to the thumb and the index finger, and C7 root supplies sensory to the index and the middle finger. So, if there is an irritation to the C6 and C7 row, that also could lead to the same symptoms like carpal tunnel, knees, pain in the first three fingers. How to differentiate C6, C7 radiculopathy and carpal tunnel syndrome? Since these two conditions show the same pain distribution pattern or a dermatomal pattern, to differentiate these two conditions, we should be able to check the myotome or the motor function of the muscle. The C6 mainly supplies to the bicep, means bending the elbow. So we can check the elbow bending action or elbow flexion action to check the C6 nerve root innervation. C7 root supplies to the triceps which means extending the elbows. To check the C7 root innervation, we can check the elbow extension or straightening of the elbow. As median nerve passes through the carpal tunnel, it supplies only the two muscle groups. One is the thinner muscle group, which is the muscles uh, along the thumb. The other two muscles are the lumbrical muscle, which lies along the second and the third digit. Here, like I said earlier, the C6, C7 mainly supplies the arm muscle, but the median nerve at the level of the carpal tunnel or as it reaches to the hand, it supplies only to the thumb and the two lumbrical muscles. So there is the differences of motor supplies of C6, C7 and the median nerve at the level of the wrist. So by checking the myotops of the strength of the muscle, we should be able to easily differentiate the C6, C7 radiculopathy and the carpal tunnel syndrome. If a person have a difficulties with the thumb abduction or resisted movement away from the other fingers, plus a pain distribution on the first three fingers or tingling numbness on the first three fingers, 
more likely to have a carpal tunnel syndrome. As the mean type, a person having pain, tingling, numbness on the first three fingers like carpal tunnel, but didn't have much trouble with the thumb movement, especially the outward pushing movement, they're more likely to have a C6, C7 radicular puppy.